Hi everybody, it's Megan Zuckman with Education Possible and today I am here with my middle schooler, one of my middle schoolers, Mariana. And hi, welcome, and we are going to talk about growing an introverted warrior today. So I'm going to flip this around. Mariana's she's holding her belt. <laughs> Um, but uh, again, I'm Megan Zeckman, and I blog over at educationpossible.com. Hello, welcome. And I blog over there with Susan Williams, my partner, and we talk about... <laughs> We're still trying to figure this out with multiple people. It doesn't always yeah, work yeah. as easily as we would like. And um, So anyway, I blog over at Education Possible with my partner, Susan Williams, and we talk all about middle school and high school over there. And... We love talking about the older kids because not many people are doing it. More people are starting to, but not as many. So anyway, today Mariana's here <laughs> to talk about uh, growing an introverted warrior because she is a warrior yes. and she's an introvert. Yes. And um, we're going to scooch up a little bit so we can have a little bit higher. There we go. Sorry about that. That's a little bit better. So anyway. Falling. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, a few years ago, Mariana was starting to feel um, a little young, and so she, scooch up a little bit, um, so we were thinking about an activity that she could do all by herself, because she has an older sister, and those of you with multiple kids, or who were a younger sibling, know that sometimes it's a little bit hard being the younger one. Right? Yes. Yeah, sometimes it's hard being the younger one. So we decided that Mariana needed something just for herself. She needed something that Mar that Abigail was not a part of and that she could succeed at on her own. And we looked around and looked around and we realized that a, a group sport, team sport, was not going to do it because then she was, it's not relying on her, right? So we were trying to find something that was just hers. So we looked at individual sports, and so we came across Taekwondo, and my husband and I didn't know anything about it. So no, we, no one in our family really had been involved. So we went and checked a couple schools out, and we went to one, and what happened when we went to the one and they tried to get you on the floor? I didn't go. What did you, talk a little bit louder. I didn't go in. What did you do? I stayed behind you. Yeah, she hid behind me. <laughs> Because she's just very, so being an introvert doesn't mean you're shy necessarily because there are introverts that are not necessarily shy, but she is shy too. And she doesn't like people, you know, she doesn't like attention on her. She likes to sit and observe people. She likes to observe situations. She likes to think about things before she dives into them. Definitely uh, not great the first time because everyone's looking at her, wondering who she is, and it's all brand new. And so it was very scary. And so we had a great teacher who came and got her out onto the floor. And why did you end up staying? Because I liked it. <laughs> because we've been there now. How long have we been doing it? Um, uh, four and a half years. Four and a half years. So from you know from going behind me to then going out on the floor and staying now for four and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> so we worked. Uh, she worked all the way up from a white belt. Started at a white belt, and now you are a second degree decided black. Belt. Second degree decided black belt with a lot of metals and a lot yes. of broken wood <laughs> along the way. A lot of bumps and bruises. But anyway, so why we wanted to share this, I actually talked about this on the blog at one point. I wanted to share this because, and I wanted Mariana here to share her point of view. A lot of people think that, oh, my son or daughter is an introvert. Oh, they're very shy. They go two ways. One, I'm going to put them into a, um, a sport, so maybe soccer or baseball or something like that. And then some kids do very well with that, even if they're introverts, and that works for them. But for some, it doesn't. And then some parents think, well, then what am I going to do? Or I'm just going to give up. But there's other choices. And that's why we wanted to share this, because Taekwondo is one of those choices. It doesn't have to be Taekwondo, however. It could be something else, but something that is an individual sport, that they take the responsibility on them to be successful so that they're not relying on other people and other people aren't relying on them because that's scary for introverts to have the whole thing riding on their shoulders gets very overwhelming especially at the beginning when they don't have the skills and they don't have the confidence so if it's just if they know the only person they're letting down is themselves it's still heartbreaking 
but it isn't as bad as the whole team and then everyone you know being frustrated it's taking that pressure some of that pressure away from them all right so we're going to talk a little bit about, about what it's done for mariana because she started when she was like seven six six and um you had oh, just turned just turned seven okay and so she april. yeah in april and so she was still pretty young. And so over the past few years, what has it done for you? Uh, I've grown confident. In what? Uh, everything. Everything. So it's given you more confidence to be just in everyday life. Yes. Yes, because you know you can handle yes. things. Yes. <laughs> and so what gave you that confidence? Passing? Getting every belt that I have. <laughs> so going up there, doing your pattern, doing the sparring, so actually succeeding throughout the Taekwondo gave you the confidence because you realized you could uh, do stuff? Yes. Okay. And what else? Being an instructor. You're part of the instructor program? Yes. And what do you do? I teach lower belts or little cobras who are three to five-year-olds Taekwondo. Okay, and what do you teach them about Taekwondo? How to do their pattern. How to do Concepts. their patterns. And so you're up there as one of the people that they look up to. Yes. Okay, so you're seen almost as an expert mm -hmm. in certain areas. So that's, that's a big confidence booster. Yes. Yes? Yes. <laughs> um, and it's also, um, what else has it done for you? Ways to make friends. Right, because you're not in public school, right? Never been, never will be. <laughs> but it's hard for homeschoolers sometimes, especially for introverts who really like to sit back and watch. Um, it's a little bit harder for them to make friends at times because people see them as too shy or standoffish, and just they just really need some time to warm up and to accept to um, check out the situation before they jump in. <laughs> and so it's a little bit easier if you're with the same kids every day, like people are in public school. And so this has given you the opportunity to meet other kids that you wouldn't have met, mm -hmm. right? And are they all eleven-year-old girls? No. Who else? Who, what? What have you become friends with? Who have you become friends with? Every age. Can you talk about that? every age? Every age, boys. Mm -hmm. Yes. Girls. Yes. Teachers. Yes. Other instructors. Yes. Yeah. How about? Uh, are they all from Florida? No. Why not? Because yeah. there are different schools other than Florida. And how do we meet them then? Tournaments. Tournaments. We go to national tournaments, so we travel around. Uh-huh. Our, the whole nation, it's really not the whole nation, it's like four <laughs> other states. But <laughs> there's... Yeah, the, those are only the tournaments. They're only the tournaments. They're the national tournaments, and so we go to other states to do tournaments. And she gets to meet other kids from other states too, and compete against them. All right, so... You obviously had a big fear when you first walked in, right? Because you were behind me. How did you get over that fear? Uh, I still have it. <laughs> you still have it. <laughs> and But it's not as big, right? No. No, it's not. And so the main fears I think you were sharing were standing in front of everybody, um, having, having everybody watching you, right? Because when you do your, um, when you're testing especially, uh, when you're doing your form, you're up there, um, everybody's kind of watching you when you're breaking your wood, everybody's, you know, you're kind of alone when you're doing the tournament, you're up there alone, and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of times, and it, as an instructor, everyone's watching you. Yes. <laughs> so what, what, what are some of the reasons that it, you're not as fearful about it now? Because I've done it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so experience, right? Yes. So you kept at it? Yes. And did, I was prepared. Oh, you were prepared. And how did you prepare? By reading and doing it at home. Practicing? Mm hmm And so what ended up happening, too, we do this quite frequently. So there'll be a scenario that'll come up. And sometimes Mariana knows that they're coming, and sometimes she doesn't. And so if she knows that something's coming up, for example, the testing for, what was it? the instructor testing. Level two. Level two instructor, she had to give a speech. <laughs> it was 
a while ago, and she still has that, oh, no. <laughs> so she did very well with it. But anyway, she knew ahead of time that she was going to have to do the speech. And so we worked on it, and we practiced, and we worked through various scenarios. Now, there's other times. Other times, do you know about things? And what happens? I get scared. She gets scared, and sometimes she'll just stand there and is kind of afraid to answer. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Silence. <laughs> and so, <laughs> there are still times when she gets caught because that's just how her makeup is. You know, she doesn't think very quickly on her feet. She really likes to process and think about what she wants to say and what she wants to do. So to call her out right there really just kind of puts her into your headlights thing. And so she gets through that day, and sometimes it's upsetting, right? But then what we do is we come home, and what do we do? We practice it. We practice it. We go through the scenario and talk about, all right, next time this is what I can do when I'm asked this. And what happens almost every time that we get ultra-prepared? Like, for example, one time she... Uh, they wanted her to leave one of the classes. It's before she really started teaching a lot. And so they wanted her to go up and, and lead something. And she got really scared and kind of didn't know what to do. And so they said, all right, well, we'll come back to you another time. And so we practiced it at home, went through all these things, and what happened? They never asked me to do it. They never asked her to do it again. This happens all the time, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Testings when, they, when you're supposed to every time get asked, what's the name of your pattern? Any movements of what's the meaning? They never asked me, and I knew it. Right, because we would work on it. I would drill her like crazy at home. <laughs> what is the name of pattern? What does it mean? How many movements? And then they wouldn't ask her. So the more prepared she was, the more prepared she is, because it still happens. The more prepared she is, the less often they ask her what we've been preparing. And I told her that's okay. You'd rather be what? Prepared. Rather than? Unprepared. Unprepared, right. You'd rather be overprepared than underprepared. Which was pretty funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, she just realized that standing in front of people was going to be what Taekwondo was about. And if she loved it, which she did, mm -hmm. and wanted to continue on, which she did, she mm -hmm. really needed to work through that fear. Now, she's showing you, she still has it. Yes. She still gets scared. But there are situations that she used to get terrified in that she doesn't anymore. But there's still some of those big times when she gets scared. And I'm a wreck at testing and <laughs> yes, tournaments. <you> <laughs> I still get scared. So, you know, if you have an introverted child and you're looking for an activity for them, you know, I really want to encourage you to think about an individual uh, sport. Again, something that an entire team is not relying on them for, um, that they but they can shine in. And Taekwondo is that for us, but there are lots of others out there Um you know, give it a try, see if that works for them. Just what I want to encourage you is not to just say, oh, they're an introvert, so we're not going to pursue something like that. Because it's really done wonders for Mariana, and it she loves it, and it's her thing. We go to it every week. We've been doing it for almost, you know, for over four and a half years, and it's just something that she's taken hold of and is really proud of. And if I hadn't tried that, if I had just said, oh, that soccer was a nightmare, mm -hmm. this was a nightmare, we're not doing this, then we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't be where we are now. And okay. I, everybody says they can't believe that she's uh, still with it and a second-degree black belt. People think I'm lying. Right. People think she's lying all the time, especially kids. Yes. They think that she's lying constantly because she's so quiet, she's so reserved, um, and they just think that there's no way, because they think that you have to be this crazy kind of kid to be a Taekwondo kid. There's plenty of those, but yes. you don't have to be that way if you don't want to be that way. So anyway, thanks for watching us. Again, I'm Megan Zekman. This is Mariana. And uh, <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with educationpossible.com. And this was, we were sharing about how to grow an introverted warrior, if you have an introverted child. And tomorrow, we're going to be talking about uh, tomorrow's Teen Book Club. So we're going to be talking about QBQ, the question behind the question. It's a really popular business book, and we've oh, been working with some business books with our teens. I thought it wasn't a book. No, it is a book. We did a, we did a, a whole thing with them.
a oh. little co-op, but it, it is actually a book, too. It is? Oh. <laughs> so that's not one of the books we've gone through. We have gone through study guides with it. Uh, but we're going to talk all about that tomorrow. You can find us at educationpossible.com. And also, if you are homeschooling, check out Homeschool Scopes. We have a lot of homeschool moms that are doing periscopes now, sharing yes. all kinds of information. Mariana loves all information. Mariana watches them all the time and learns all different kinds of things. So thanks for watching us, and we'll see you later. Bye.